Okay, so we've got some reviews to do. Um, I've got a nice parcel from Gearbest. Lovely Sherry has sent me a few uh, items to play with. So uh, we're going to have a quick look at what she has sent us and then we're going to do a video for each one. So all of these items are designed for the Raspberry Pi. The first one we've got is a Subtronic X5000 which is a high quality DAC plus amp that fits straight onto a Raspberry Pi. Then we've got this item which is electronic paper. I'm quite looking forward to that. I've never played with uh, e-paper. Then the last one, a nice little unit. This is a little liquid crystal display which is I believe the 3310 Nokia display which again fits onto a Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to go and have a look through uh, these items one by one and uh, see what they do. So the first item we're going to look at is this uh, Subtronics um, high quality DAC and AMP. Uh, this is designed for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so we're just going to open the box and have a look what's inside. So you get a nice on off button, looks to be illuminated. Little adapter for speakers. A volume control. Uh, some spacers so you can fit it onto the Raspberry Pi. And then you get this little bridge which uh, takes the Raspberry Pi's HDMI port and then puts it onto the uh, amplifier. And here we have the board. There's quite a lot of weight to this board, it looks quite high quality, um, so I'm looking forward to using this one. Uh, you can see where most things go, they're fairly obvious, so the on-off button goes up here near the power port. The uh, volume control goes down here, and then you've got the speakers up in this corner over here. Then obviously when you put this on the Raspberry Pi, you'll then have uh, this bridging the two HDMI ports. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to do now is uh, get a Raspberry Pi and load up a uh, media software onto it. And to do that I'm going to follow the instructions on top of the board which uh, basically sends you to the uh, subtronics.com website. So we've had a look at the hardware and now we're just going to have a look at the uh, website and see what we need to do for the software. So here you can see the Subtronics website. Um, Go to the X series products and then go down to the one we have, which is the X5000. If you click on see details, it brings you it up, it shows you all the parts. Goes for a hardware installation, which to be honest, I've already covered in the video. And then it goes to the software configuration, which I've also covered in the video. Um, it's useful that it tells you what you can run here. Um, and I chose OSMC, Open Source Media Center. So um, if you go to software configuration and then click on the OSMC, that will bring up that website. And here you can see you get the choice to download it. And what I found easiest is don't click on this or Linux down here. I've gone for disk images and then it lists them all down here and obviously depending on whether you're on a Raspberry Pi 1, 0 or 0 wireless or um, Raspberry Pi 2, 3 or 3 plus you then click on the release you want once you click on that it will download the image and once you've downloaded that image you need to do the following so once that's downloaded you should then be able to go to your downloads folder double click on what's downloaded it's uh, zipped so you're then going to need to extract it uh, just extract it where you want I'm going to do it back into the downloads folder and once that has extracted you will then have an image so close that down there's our image uh, the tool I like to use to get this image onto a mini SD card is the uh, win32 disk imager so what you're going to have to do on this is open the folder navigate to the downloads folder and then that's the image we've just opened up. Uh, so click on that and then make sure you've got a mini SD card in your computer and that is K in my case and if I press write that will now write the image to the K or the mini SD. So that'll take a little while but once it's done you'll then be able to use that card directly in the Raspberry Pi. 
So the method I chose was to get a Raspberry Pi running with uh, Open Source Media Center first uh, and then add the amp after. Uh, you do need to be careful when you are using the amp that you do not use a 5 volt supply that you would normally use on a Raspberry Pi. However, if you uh, don't add the amp until afterwards, then you can obviously use your 5 volt supply. So I'm just going to build this up now. I've got a uh, Raspberry Pi. This is the uh, B Plus model. And uh, I'm going to start by uh, putting the screws underneath and putting the pillars in place. Try to avoid losing any of these screws, they're actually uh, 2.5 millimeters, so not your average screws here. Okay, that's them done. Now we should be able to uh, slot the uh, board on top. Make sure the pins line up. Okay, so that was fairly easy. Let's put these screws back in the top. Okay, so that's done. Uh, it's quite a nice assembly. Everything seems to fit nicely together. So now we're just going to push this HDMI adapter into place. Okay, that fits in nicely as well. So now we're going to add the power button. And I'm going to wire up the speaker as well. We're going to actually get some speakers in a minute. Uh, that's the volume on there. Um, so that's it done as much as I can do until I've got the speakers. Um, but I am just going to point out this power adapter. You're allowed between 6 and 24 volts. The higher the wattage, the higher the voltage you want to use. Um, but it's important to note this jack is not... Um, the normal jack, a normal jack would be um, have a central hole that is uh, 2.1 millimeters. This is the slightly larger size, which is 2.5 millimeters in diameter. Um, if you happen to have a 2.1, you will try all day long to fit it in, and it won't fit. So I happen to have uh, I happen to have got a uh, 12 volt supply, and I've uh, changed the uh, adapter over. That is the bigger one you can see. I can find the smaller one, and just for comparison, 2.5 millimeters, 2.1 millimeters. You must use the 2.5. And for reference, it's the shorter version. Uh, these are both actually short. There is a much longer one, but you can get away with just using the short one. Okay, so I've finished putting this together now, and I've. Uh, Connected up these um, car speakers are from my camper. Uh, I've then got a screen and I've got a keyboard and a mouse uh, ready to go. Um, the only thing I'm going to point out here is for the power adapter, again, you need this 2.5 millimeter jack plug and the center core is positive. 
it's not clear anywhere about that but make sure you do get that most of them do have a uh, center pin that is positive but uh, I have in the past found one manufacturer was different um, make sure the volumes turn right down first of all and then when you're ready turn it on nice green LED comes on and that should boot up Now there are two things you need to do to make this work. The first one is go to My OSMC, then navigate to the Raspberry Pi, and you then need to go down to Hardware Support, and in the Sound Card Overlay, make sure it's Hi-Fi Berry DAC, DAC Overlay. So that's the first thing. It does tell you you need to restart, but we won't need to restart because we've made no changes. Then you want to go down to Settings, and then go down to system, go down to audio, and this time in the audio output device you want to set it to what you've just configured which is the Hi-Fi Berry DAC analog. And once you've done those two things you should find everything will work. Um, I'm just going to go to a video Just see what it is. You might you may realise there's no sound, that's because I haven't put the volume up. Let's try that again. Now it does have quite a lot of volume, so do take care. I'm gonna try that again. Okay, so I think you get the point. Um, it's definitely got enough volume. I think these speakers um, have got a little too much uh, treble, and because they're not in any enclosure, then uh, you've lost a bit of the bass. But I think this is a really good first attempt, and as a media player, it works really quite well. So that's all I'm going to do on this uh, video for this um, DAC and amplifier for the Raspberry Pi. Um, I think there's loads more that you can do with the open source media center. I think I've just scratched the surface so I'm going to leave this built up and uh, maybe make a few more videos of uh, setting up open source media center. Um, I've really enjoyed doing this one though, it's really easy to set up. So a big thank you for um, Gearbest for sending me these items, uh, particularly this one and uh, if you guys want to buy this item uh, please follow the link below. Um, I believe that somehow earns me some credit and I'll be able to review even more things. So thank you for watching and I'm now going to move on to the next item.